Oh, do you want us to be? I should have put a background of Millport on. <laughs> hold, on yeah. hold on. No, it's fine. Let me just get the um, use virtual background. Take the minute for this to connect with. Um, I'll be in the shot. Oh, there we are. That's nice. Oh, set the, yeah. Cuts you out occasionally. <laughs> Let you notice before it connects with Facebook. I can never get the lighting right in here. I've given up on trying to. When you face the bathroom. Oh, no, you're not in that room, are you? Face the bathroom. Yes, I am in that room. <laughs> Remember, we saw Tony last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. I think we're just about ready to go live here. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Come on back, Philippa. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> All right. It's loading. I have to stick with this. All right. We are live. Good morning, everybody. I am Kathy Alessandro, the Yes I Can Coach. And as I hinted on my Facebook page yesterday, I have a special interview coming up here um, with some ladies that I met a couple of years ago who have created an amazing business around an idea on, I don't know whether it was actually on a napkin <laughs> or not, but, um, but <laughs> we'll find that out in a second. But you know, I just wanted to um, share this story with everybody because it's really all about inspiration and following your dreams and speaking something into reality, right? And when you get together with a group of women, you never know what is gonna happen, right? You never know what is gonna create. If you put those dreams out there, if you talk about um, you know, where you wanna go and things that you see and visions and, um, and where that all happens and where that all leads is where we can lead to Millport, Scotland. So let me tell you a little bit about how I met these ladies. Um, I was actually visiting a girlfriend in, on the island of um, Cumbrae in Scotland most of you or many of you who follow me know that and I spent actually three uh, months um, one summer so it's been two summers ago because we lost that year in there dying to get back it is the most um, special magical place as far as I'm concerned on earth um, and met these women most of these women actually while I was there after I left and and uh, they were having conversation and there's game nights and there's pubs and oh, all the fun stuff I miss right and there was a conversation that happened between these ladies that actually birthed a business. And so here today, we are going to talk about that business. We're going to talk about how, you know, a tiny little idea that was talked about on game night has turned into an international company, right? Um, all during COVID, mind you, all during COVID. So let's get a little started. I'd love to just, um, and Brahman, I'm going to direct this first question to you. Um, you know, how did, how did you get started? Let's talk about how this idea even came up and the story behind um and the name of the company let's start there <laughs> i'll let you share that uh, okay well the name of the company is isle of cumbry distillers uh and we're five women-owned uh, it's a women-owned company we met in a bar <laughs> and literally uh we actually didn't know each other and this was only 18 months ago we we knew each one of us knew some of the other group but we had never met as a group and um uh, I had just been talking to a consultant uh, for the island who, who was looking to raise money for, looking for ideas to raise money for our town hall. And I had just come back with my husband from uh, whiskey distilleries. And uh, so I had, I said, well, why don't, you know, really they, we, this island should have a whiskey distillery or a gin distillery. And that was the idea that we started talking about at the pub for quiz night. And I don't know if we got really drunk that night. <laughs> or <laughs> I think we did actually. There's some pictures, <laughs> but that idea uh, took legs, and uh, within a month we had opened a business <laughs> with fully full naivety, which is actually a very good thing that we we were naive. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, I bet. Right. I mean, just stepping into it, though, having the idea and fully stepping into it. And I think I had read somewhere on your website. Um, that there are over 175 gin distilleries in Scotland. Is that correct? There are about 100. There, there are over 400 different brands of gin in Scotland. But I think that there are 97 uh, uh, distilleries, of which only less than five are women-owned. Okay. Fully women-owned. Right, right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, and, that, and I love that, right? That, that you guys have stepped into an industry that typically is male-dominated. 
um, and became educated and what that needed to be. I mean, and I know some of you own a business or owned a business um, previous to this. So you kind of had some business experience and where you were going. But, um, you know, it's, it's following that, that inkling, right? So what were some of the first steps? Um, Janine, let's talk it, uh, to you. What were some of the first steps that you guys took when, okay, you, you came up with the idea on a, on a fun night in a bar? Um, what was the next step uh, that you took to move forward on the dream? Yeah, so I decided that it would be a good idea to have a look to see what courses are available to help us get to understand um, the industry, how to learn to distill. And I'll remember uh, the day Bronwyn walked into, um, it was Connect Cumbrae, and I'd said, I'd, I'd practically galloped across the floor to say that I'd um, found a course. <laughs> so myself and Julie went over to um, Bakewell, and we did a five day residential course in brewing and distilling, which was fabulous. We had a fabulous time. Um, and we took it from there. It was intuitive. One thing led to another. Um, like Bronwyn says, we were very naive, which turned out to be a good thing. There were so many unknown unknowns, <laughs> but we met them um, each one, each one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And the yep. fact that none of you had any idea and needed to take a course on gin, right? This idea of, of doing something and not even knowing the first thing and how to do it. Right. And so that's something, you know, I think so many women, um, they have an idea, they have a dream, they have a thought on something they want to do. And that fear of not knowing what to do just stops them in their tracks and they turn around and go the other way. Right. Instead of stepping into the fear taking the course, you know, getting some other people around them so that they can really um, realize that dream, right? Um, and that's, that's, I don't know, sad, I think, you know, that we, we as women, we, we take a step back and well, I can't do that. It's that mindset thing, right? Um, of course, you also had five of you to cheer each other on in, um, in what you were doing, which is super exciting. Okay, so now you launched, you took the course, you had a place on the island where you were gonna distill, um, when was the date, what was the actual date that you technically launched the company, uh, you know, to the public? Um, so we launched the company, it was um, September 2019. Um, so the actual launch date, I think Julie would probably be able to tell us more about that. Okay, yeah. Julie. Although you're on mute. <laughs> on the, um, <clears throat> the day that we were sitting around Philippa's uh, kitchen table, I love that. And just getting all of our ducks in a row. And we went on to, uh, in the UK, you have to go on Companies House website to, to do all the incorporation of your business. And it was on, we didn't know it at the time, but it turned out it's on the uh, September 11th, 2019. Okay. So, which right. was an odd day to, to choose to do a new beginning, but let's, let's uh, try to go positive with that date, so. Right. Absolutely. I love that. All right. And then you moved into, um, you know, create well, distilling and, and coming up with that first batch. Um, there's a story behind Julie. I think I was reading on the website about how you kind of came up with the botanicals that go with the gin, correct? Oh, absolutely. Well, the whole idea after, uh, after we wanted to do something um, to get together and, and raise money for the town hall, uh, we really expanded upon that. And uh, long story short, uh, we're going to be using 5% of our, our profits uh, toward other community efforts as well, along with town hall. So it's not just the town hall. Uh, we're not yet profitable. So sorry, <laughs> before, wow. we'll, get there, we'll get there one of these days, I promise. There's a lot of uh, startup costs going into all of this. So we're, we're getting there. Um, but let me back up to your question, which is around the story of the botanicals. And anybody who's ever been to the Isla Cumbre wow. and to the town of Millport, there is such a special feeling that pretty much washes over you as you get off of the ferry, there's a calm sense of peace and tranquility and uh, really uh, stepping back in time. Uh, even if you've never been here before, you can't help but feel that this is very special and a place that's almost frozen in time, a lot of people say. Um, I 
just absolutely fell in love with it when I first uh, moved here four years ago. <clears throat> so uh, that, that feeling, and a lot of people have been coming here with their families for generations. So when we came upon the name of uh, Nostalgin, it really was to take that whole idea and the feeling of calm, peace, and nostalgia for simpler times, uh, quieter times. And uh, when we chose the botanicals, it was, it was uh, easy to um, go with a, an initial front uh, flavor of lavender, something to just go right for calm and yeah. Yes, just relax. And uh, so, yeah, we've got uh, lavender, heather, uh, milk thistle, beautiful Scottish thistle, um, juniper, of course, to make it gin, and blackberries. And brambles. brambles, yes. Oh, can't forget the brambles. This this <laughs> island in the in the autumn time frame, this island is absolutely bursting with beautiful, juicy blackberries. And here they're known as brambles. And your hands get wickedly purple and black as you're picking them all off of the, the sticky bushes. And it's just fantastic. So uh, those are the botanicals in our gin. And it is gorgeous. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, have, I, I haven't actually, because, well, I don't know, you may be shipping to me this. I have not actually tasted it yet. But let me, let me set the stage for just a minute for everybody who may be listening and watching on Facebook. So you literally, for me, okay, you land in Glasgow, Scotland, and you take a train, or you could drive too, but I took a train and you go through the Scottish countryside, mm -hmm. which is just so beautiful in and itself. And the train ends at this small town called Largs, um, right, the, right along the, um, what is it? The Firth of Clyde, right? The water. And then you have to take this ferry ride, which is about, <clears throat> what is eight it? Minutes. About minutes? Eight minutes. Exactly eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. And you do, you get on this ferry and it's like you are leaving the chaos of the world behind and you are entering this magical, peaceful, um, special, special place that I cannot wait to get back to. Um, and, and just this idea of what you ladies have created to kind of reflect that. And I love the fact, um, you know, the, the pictures that I see from people, you know, who is a children, um, you know, in, in California, for example, it would be like going to Catalina Island, right? These mm -hmm. memories that you have um, from your childhood or your youth and what that all brings and the nostalgia that it brings. Um, you know, real quickly, let me touch because not all of you are Scottish. I should have mentioned that on the front end, right? So um, why don't you, I think Bronwyn, you're Canadian, correct? I am. Okay, Julie, you're an American, right? Yep. Okay, Linda, Scottish? I'm, uh, I'm English and American. Okay, I'm all right, Philippa? Oh wait, you're you're <laughs> muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from God's own country. That's Yorkshire in England. Okay, awesome. And Janine. Likewise, I'm from God's own country in England. I mean, I'm a Yorkshire woman. Okay. And we have no right. Scots. So, right, right. <laughs> Look at that. Right. Okay. I've got Scottish blood. <laughs> oh, yeah, I that's awesome. actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's so fun. Okay. So Linda, let me ask you, um, you know, you guys started in September of 2019, and then we all know what happened in March of 2020, and I'm not sure actually the date, um, it may have been a little bit earlier or later um, in the UK, but um, COVID and quarantine hit, and I think actually even now you are still um, completely locked down, uh, if I am, have read that right. Um, so what are some of the challenges that you faced with launching a business and having a brick and mortar and everything that goes with that in the middle of a pandemic. Yes. Uh, well, actually, it's exactly a year ago today that we went into lockdown and we are still in lockdown yeah. uh, for a couple of more weeks. Um, but for us, uh, a lot of things kind of came, we felt, came to a grinding halt because as you can imagine, handling um, alcohol, distilling alcohol requires all kinds of permits, um, licenses and you know you name it we needed it so um, all of the departments that we needed to work with had pretty much shut down and started working from home so they um, so the process really slowed up and um, in order to get a premises license, you have to go before a board. Well, all the board meetings were canceled for months. 
So we felt um, we felt a little bit, you know, disheartened. Um, but it, it we we were moving slowly forward, but the light, um, the 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 light, the you know, the silver lining, if you like, was that that gave us more time to really get our ducks in a row as far as all of the paperwork that was required, all of the background that we needed to provide the, and to make sure that the space that we were running the distillery in was compliant. So at first, you know, we thought, oh no, we can't do this anymore. Um, we actually realized that, you know, this slowed us down and gave us a chance to really um, do the right thing and get on the right track. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we, you know, we've been, this is all self-invested. So we wanted to find another resource for a little bit more investment. So we came upon crowdfunding. And um, we had um, decided to do this crowdfunding project just before lockdown. Mm. And so of course, as soon as lockdown came, we said, well, crowdfunding isn't gonna work. No one, you know, no one's getting any income and no one will want to spend money supporting us. So let's forget doing um, crowdfunding. Well, f fortunately, we had a mentor um, who was training us on our crowdfunding project. And she said, no, keep going because people are at home now. They're flipping through, they're spending more time on Facebook. They're, you know, they're looking for things that they want to support and, you know, have a little bit of um, feel good um, about it. So, so we, so we said, okay, well, what the heck, you know, nothing to lose. Um, Royal Bank of Scotland was doing a match funding um, program as well. So we jumped on their bandwagon, went through all this training and started our crowdfunding with the hopes that we would raise 5,000 pounds and that Bank of Scotland would match that 5,000 and we'd have 10. Well, in the end, we made over 20,000 pounds. So it was, you know, it was, it's amazing what we were able to accomplish at a time when, you know, people around us were sort of wondering whether we were crazy or not. <laughs> Well, let's face it. I think, you know, anybody who's in that entrepreneurial space and having their business, many others who have not experienced that do think that we are crazy. Right? <laughs> and they wonder, right? But there's something about, um, you know, that risk, that risk versus reward and, and what we're willing to step into. I love the fact that you talked about you bootstrapped it. It was, you know, you were actually self-funded, um, but then you went to the crowdsourcing and then lo and behold, you know, while you were holding back and about to say no, somebody else spurred you guys forward. And, um, and wow, I hadn't heard that it was that much. So that's fantastic, right? Yeah. Um, exciting stuff. That's great. Yeah. Um, so Philippa, how, you know, as, oh, actually one other thing before, let me step back into this too. The other thing, I love the fact, and Philippa, you can speak to this, that you guys are um, philanthropic, right? So there is a purpose, there is a reason. And you, you talked about this. That was one of the reasons you started the business, started was to have it on the island, but support the town hall reconstruction. And now 5% is also going back of any of your purchases, even if you aren't making a profit yet, right? There is a purpose behind that. Um, was that, I mean, it sounds like that, Philip, was really the driving force behind this. Um, did the gin idea come first or was it that you were looking for something to be able to, to support the philanthropic causes on the island? Well, um, that's a very interesting question because if you're going to start something from scratch, especially something that none of you have got any experience of, the why, is very important. Um, the gin was there. Somebody kind of planted the seed. Wouldn't it be a wouldn't it be a great laugh if we started the distillery? Hey ho! How difficult <coughs> can it be? And uh, it turns out to be very difficult. But in addition to that, the uh, the gin was going to be the the way in to being able to support the local community. And as it turns out, that's come a full circle because the local community has been of enormous support to us. And they've got behind it. And it's um, one of the reasons why, I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah. Live. Uh, yeah, well, you know, sorry. Um, so, uh, yes, we've, where was I? We've had tremendous support from our local community and it's them who um, have kind of picked us up and carried us along. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a difficult question to answer with just a simple sentence, as you can see. <laughs> but um, certainly um, it was the reason why 
we wanted to get going was to be able to support the local community and the way to do that was make a change. Uh, you know, that why, I mean, I'm sure many of you, or maybe some of you, uh, and certainly some of our listeners um, have watched or are familiar with Simon Sinek and, you know, know your why and even the TED talk that goes along with it. And how when we, when we have that driving force, when we have that why within us, and especially when it's a group like that in a community, um, how that can just continue driving us forward, right? Even in the face of fear or doubt or all the other things, pandemic that, uh, you know, might pop up, right? So let me ask you this, um, how do you ladies measure success? The amount of gin sold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I was gonna, if I knew what it was, is it a That's shot bigger or what? <laughs> right, right, okay, all right. So. I say problem solving as well. Obviously the product is the thing that we are making and therefore we've got to offload that, but the problem solving, I, I feel an enormous um, sense of empowerment that I've actually managed to negotiate .gov.uk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, problem solving is huge. Okay. I think the networks as well within the industry, we've made such good friends. Uh, we've had mentorship from different distillers. Um, the networks we forge within the industry have been immensely supportive. Um, so I think that is a measure of success as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think, Kathy, going back to what you asked about the community and what Philippa was talking about in terms of <clears throat> the support from the community, our success, I think, in the long term, uh, a short term is Jen, but in the long term, it will be what is our impact on the community? Uh, you know, what, what we're trying to support the town hall and other initiatives, but that's not the only thing that we're doing. We're trying to create employment. We're sort of in an, we're as older women, we're in an, in an advan, advantageous position, I think, because three of us came out of retirement. <laughs> for this. And so we don't have the same urgency to make vast sums of money, although that, I think we'd all agree that would be lovely too. Um, <laughs> but we, we have an opportunity, I think, to give back in a bigger way than we would if we were in our 20s and we were relying on this solely. Um, so, so one of our, uh, our key indicators of success is, is creating employment, and we've done that very well. We've partnered with local universities. That's been our strategy. Mm -hmm. And so last year, for example, we got some funding and we hired a student from the University of Strathclyde to do a marketing plan for us. Uh, we just got new funding from the uh, Glasgow Caledonia University for another intern. We got some government funding for some employment for, uh, for someone for six months. And we're working with two groups from the University of Strathclyde who are doing uh, master's projects with us. So, so we, we can really give back. We have a lot of collective experience. I'm from the business and education world. Linda's from hospitality. Uh, Julie's got tons of experience in business and, you know, and technology and Philippa has been in teaching and Janine in healthcare and other areas. So collectively, we have so much to give back. So I think for me, if, if I set, say, what do I want at the end of 10 years? It's, it's that kind of impact. And I think we can do that. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely can. I absolutely, yeah, absolutely can. So <clears throat> what is next for uh, Cumbrae, Cumbrae uh, Distillers? Well, we were... With <laughs> We, so uh, uh, until now, we haven't been distilling in our own premises. Okay. We, um, we were distilling on, on our neighboring island, the Isle of Butte. And the reason for that is that we didn't have yet all the necessary licenses to be able to distill. We, we could personally distill, we, we had those licenses, but we didn't have the license for our premises to be a site for distillation, if you like. Mm -hmm. So, um, until now, we were distilling on Butte with um, the Isle of Butte gin and their distiller, who has been our mentor over this last um, year, year or so. Super and, neat. Um, we, on Monday, we actually distilled for the very first time in our very own premises, Ooh. a brand new gin that we're bringing to the market. So we're very excited that it's, it's a double, um, 
a double, what am, I, what am I trying to say? Double first. It's the first, well, it's the second gin, but it's the first batch of our second gin. Right. And it's the very first batch of gin that has been made ever on Cumbrae uh, in Melbourne. Oh my gosh, so exciting. So follow our journey on Facebook. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, speaking of that, so let me ask you, I, you know, I said I haven't, I have little shot glasses or they're not called shot glasses for gin, I forget what they're Tasting called. glasses. Yeah, thank tasting you. glasses, Kathy. <laughs> thank you. Tasting, that's right. Tasting glasses. It sounds much more um, grown up. <laughs> but, um, but do you ship to the United States or do you ship outside of Scotland? How does that, you know? Yeah, yeah. We, we work with a, something called a stockist. I didn't know what a stockist was. <laughs> it's a, an English word. It's someone who stocks your uh, gin. So we work with a company in Edinburgh called whiskeyinternational.com. And they stock our gin and ship to the U.S. And uh, so um, that's I'm in the U.S. right now, and that's how I get it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check that out. Okay, perfect. <laughs> all right, so let me ask. Let me just wrap this up with a final question. You know, I'm all about yes, I can. Right. That that is my motto. That is my mantra. Um, I love what you guys have created. It was all about yes, I can when you were facing the challenges or whatever. So my final question that I ask on any of my interviews is what makes you <clears throat> a yes, I can woman? So I'd like to just kind of go around and ask each one of you, what makes you in this, in this sense, what makes you a yes, I can woman? So Janine, let me start with you. Uh, what makes me a yes, I can woman is um, I think there's a certain amount of personal determination just to say, yes, I'm going to dig deep here. I'm going to give it a try and a willingness to say, okay, it didn't work out that time, but this is what I've learned and this is what I'm gonna take forward. Uh, these are the lessons I'm, I'm gonna um, use to shape my next experience. Love that. Yep, take the lesson and move on. Philippa, what's yours? Um, what you? well, yes, I'm, I mean, hanging on what Janine said, um, plus uh, my experience um, as a teacher uh, it's pretty scary when you start off standing in front of a bunch of 15 year olds um, who are there to make your job very difficult and I've overcome that so I don't have the I don't have the feeling that I can't um, <laughs> sometimes it takes me a while to get to the can but it never occurs to me that there isn't a way to solve it so I, I think that helps love that awesome fantastic Linda what about you um, I think mine is just, um, I've been fortunate enough to live and travel um, to lots of different corners of the world and different experiences with different cultures and being assimilated and having to sort of, you know, change the way you think about things has just had a huge impact on my life. So I've just sort of been immersed in it, I think. Awesome. Fantastic. And Julie? But unmute yourself. <laughs> unmute. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I can. Um, I, th I think for, for me, the uh, reason I know that I'm a yes, I can woman is an unrelenting sense of curiosity. I am absolutely just on the edge of my seat with every new venture to see, I wonder what's going to happen next and how can I direct it to what I think could be the best outcome possible. Uh, but I just you never know what tomorrow is going to bring and what new challenges are going to come up. And But complete faith in knowing that with every challenge, there's got to be a way to get through it. And uh, yeah, and I guess also the um, my other mantra, <laughs> one of my other mantras is uh, uh, if, if there's a phrase of uh, living the good life, I figure somebody's got to live the good life and it might as well be me. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Awesome. Um, and Bronwyn. Um, uh, well, I, I love a good challenge. Um, this, this has been an amazing challenge and a very positive one. Uh, and it, the, it, it is driven the yes, I can. Um, I, I, I think we've all just had so much learning out of this experience to date. And we know there's so much more. Um, and uh, just, you know, the, the, it, you just keep going because you know of, of the impact. I had 
I had an aha moment when I, I was from education and uh, I went to a conference once in down here in Palm Springs actually. And it was about uh, this, your second half of your life. It was called the second half conference or something. And it was basically the idea that, you know, when you retire, your life doesn't end and, mm -hmm. and you get to choose what you want to do in the second half of your life. Sometimes you don't get those choices in the first half. And so it, for me, it's like, this, this is something I've chosen to do and, and I wanna be the best. I'm very competitive. <laughs> I'd like to be really good at, at, at things. So that, that really drives that, yes, I can do this. You watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I love how you, you know, commented to the second half of life, right? I mean, it's, there, it is never too late to start a new business, to start a new adventure, to do something new, to make a shift. It is never too late, never too late. If you've yeah. got that, yes, I can attitude, love that, okay. Oh, have fun, you know, we have so much fun together, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, Brahman, since you're unmuted at the moment, what's the, um, the website address for? <clears throat> it is www.isleofcumbreae. That's an AE at the end. And then dash distillers.com. Perfect. I will put that in the, uh, in the chat below. I will put it in the show comments so that you guys can connect. Um, I believe you're also on Instagram and Facebook, right? Yep. So I will tag you there from the Facebook Live. Yep. So connect with them. Um, go over and like the page. See what they're doing. These are an amazing group of five women who have created something so unique, so special in an industry that is, you know, male dominated, right? Followed a dream in a way that is supporting community, right? I mean, you just think about all those pieces you hit on, um, you know, and that's why I wanted to have you ladies on because to inspire others, to follow their dreams, to step into whatever that is that they're wanting to support um, and create that, that business, that give back, all the pieces that go with it. So ladies, thank you so much some of you joining me from Scotland, some of you joining from me from California. It's been a pleasure to uh, to share the morning, my morning, <laughs> with you. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a real All pleasure. right. We'll see everybody soon. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.